I want to welcome you today to the Douglas Family History YouTube channel. Again, my name is David Douglas. Thank you for those that have been watching our videos on this certain Douglas family tree, Douglas family ancestry. We have taken you back really a good ways. On, on, on one side, as far as even the, uh, I reckon you would say the maternal side, we went back even probably into the seven and eight hundreds. On the paternal side, uh, the male bloodline, we, we have went back uh, even also probably in the seven, eight hundreds. And a lot of this has actually ended up um, actually with the Saxons and also the Vikings. Uh, and for the next maybe two or three videos, they're going to be kind of short videos. I'm, I'm hoping that they're short. Uh, we're going to kind of bring back in and kind of rehearse some of the things that we have mentioned uh, in previous videos, but I kind of want to make it short. And I'm going to be speaking about, as far as even today, about Siegfried the Dane, the first count of Gwens, and about the Douglas family, you know, and his connection with what I believe the Douglas family. And I know we've already mentioned it, but I want to do this short video for those that maybe don't want as far as to listen to, to, long, to watch long videos. So if you would, you know, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like I said, we've got, uh, I don't know, several other videos, you know, about this family starting in Georgia, going to North Carolina, then into Virginia, and then we go over to England, uh, then Scotland, and then we end up even uh, the northern part of France, uh, a place called Normandy, you know, which was actually settled by the Northmen, or what they call, you know, the Normans, uh, which was actually of a Viking descent, and I believe its founder was a man that's been real popular, you know, as far as even in movies, and they called him Rollo. Uh, and so, I want to start off today, like I said, about Siegfried the Dane, the first Count of Gwen. But if you would, please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Maybe, you know, give us a thumbs up. Uh, make some comments, and you know, I'd love to hear from you. If there's any way that I can help you, uh, and like I said, you can go uh, to our also our website that we got. It's a family website entitled Dark Streams, uh, the Douglas Family Story. All you have to do is just, you know, Google uh, Dark Streams at Wix site. That's W-I-X-S-I-T-E. Uh, and I believe you'll be able to find as far as, you know, the written down, typed out information, hopefully, you know, maybe that will help you. Uh, with your family history. So I want to begin each and every one of these short videos with this. Starting out with the first man that took on as far as the Douglas name, and his name was William uh, D. Douglas, or William of Douglas. Some have called him William, the first Lord of Douglas. He was born approximately around 1146 in Lanarkshire, Scotland, and his father was Theobald Le Fleming. And his mother was Kirsdale de uh, Moravia. Theobald Le Fleming was born approximately 1120 in Alderman Manor, Lancashire, uh, England. And his father was Sir Michael Le Fleming, and his mother's name is un un unknown at this time. Sir Michael Le Fleming was born around 1095 in Beckenet. Cumberland, England, and his father was William Le Fleming, and his mother was Lady Ada Rummagingly. William Le Fleming was born uh, around 1074 in Devonshire, England, and his father was Archambault Le Fleming. He was the first one to take on uh, as far as the name Le Fleming, and I know that there is a Fleming family today, which probably, you know, descended, descended from, you know, this Luff Fleming. And all this means is that they came from the area of what they call Flanders, and they were Flemish-speaking people. Flanders, as you know, is in the northern part of Belgium. There is also a portion of it uh, in France. They even call it the county of Flanders. And us up there around what they call the area of, of, of Calais, 
uh, and Gwen's and what they call St. Omer. Uh, we'll bring all that out probably, you know, maybe a little bit later. So this Archambault Fleming, I believe, was a big part of the ducal court of William the Conqueror, which we know later, you know, he became uh, king of England, you know, for a period of time. And his mother's name is unknown. <coughs> Archambault Le Fleming's father was none other, and he was named after him, and his father was named Archambault the Viscount, or otherwise the Sheriff of Rouen, which was in Normandy, France. And his mother name, like I said, is unknown. This Archambault that was the Viscount of Rouen was born approximately 990 in Gwens, what they call Nord, Pas de Calais, France. And his father's name was Raoul de Gwens, otherwise Raoul of Gwens, and he was the third count of Gwens. He held that title of nobility. Archambald, the Viscount of Rouen, his mother's name was Rosella de St. Paul. Archambald was the Viscount, like I said, or the sheriff in the ducal court of really started out with um, William the Conqueror's father, who was Robert uh, the First, the Magnificent. He was actually, you know, the uh, the Duke of Normandy. For a little while also, I believe he was also, this uh, Archambault, the Viscount of Rouen, was also under William the Conqueror, possibly for a little while. Raoul de Gwens, who was Archambal, the Viscount of Rouen's father, he was the third count of Gwens. He was born 956 in Gwens, Nord, Pas de Calais, France. And his father was Ardolf de Gwens, who was the second count of Gwens. And his mother was Mathilda, or Matilda of Boulogne. This is all located in around uh, the northern part of France and Normandy. Ardolf de Gwens, the second count of Gwens, was born 930 in Nord uh, de Calais, France. And his father was Siegfried the Dane of Gwens, the first count of Gwens. And his mother was Ethrude, the daughter of Arnuth, the first Arnulf first, the third count of, uh, of actually of Gwens. So, we see this man named Siegfried the Dane. He was born around 905 in Ringelheim, Germany in an area called Lower Saxony. His father was actually Theodric of Ringelheim. And his mother was Reginhild de Friesland, who was the daughter of Godfried, Duke of Frisia. Before coming to the area of Gwens, France, which was, when he came there, it was 928. It was said in some of the historical records that Emperor Henry the Fowler uh, bestowed or otherwise gave the government of Brandenburg actually to Siegfried. At that time, he was Count of Ringelheim, the area uh, that he was from. Emperor Henry the Fowler, he was uh, kind of fortifying as far as that part of his uh, rule and government, and he started fortifying that area around nine. 23. But then he bestowed upon Siegfried, the Count of Ringelheim, uh, the government of Brandenburg. So he also became as Lord like the, uh, the Count or the Duke of Brandenburg. This took place around 927, about a year before he arrived at Gwens, France. So he had this in his control, so to speak 
under his uh, authority almost simultaneously. When it come down to Brandenburg and Gwens, he was holding both of these areas. I was reading in one place, he was a very great, even military commander. But on his father's side, they, they were located in Lower Saxony, as far as the Saxon people. And on his mother's side of the family were the Viking, the Viking kings, who were from Denmark and Norway. In a historical record that was actually written about the history of Gwens, it was written about this Siegfried. Said that it was written about him and it was written in Latin. And these are the words, Nepos et Cognitus Germanus. And this is translated, grandson and relative by blood on his mother's side, offspring to the king of Denmark, which he was actually the grandson of King Harold Clack Half Danison. His father was Godfrey. He was the, uh, the, the, the prince, so to speak. But then when his father, uh, Harold Clack, was baptized, and he was as a child, I believe approximately at six years of age, and his mother, they were baptized as far as... Uh, in a place there in Germany, and they excommunicated him and kicked him out of Denmark as their king, the Vikings, did. So he was placed in an area called Fry's Land, which was in actually what you would say modern-day uh, the Netherlands where the Dutch people are at. So this Siegfried was related and actually the offspring and the bloodline on his mother's side Related to the king of Denmark, he was the grandson of Harold Clack Habdanison. And also in this historical account, this book written about the history of Gwens, said he came to Gwens to receive his paternal on his father's side inheritance. In this account, it said that Siegfried was of the bloodline of Count Walbert who was even called St. Walbert, who was there almost 200 years around, they said 663. But I don't believe that this is the right Walbert. This one that was there in 663 gave up his land to St. Burton's Abbey, this monastery in 663. So if he gave up his land just turned it over to him. How could Siegfried claim it? He had, he had given it up. So I don't believe that that was the Walbert. Now, Siegfried the Dane did have a great-grandfather that was in Lower Saxony named Walbert, Count of Ringelheim, on his paternal father's side. Now, a lot of these counts of Flanders, uh, that was that that was there, and even in uh, the Flanders area, the Baldwins. Some has even said that, and I know they really hadn't found as far as the proof, but they said that could be a possibility that Harold Clack had Dennison and one of the Baldwins, who was the Count of Flanders were actually related. So one of these Baldwins actually died in the Gwens area. And he actually is buried there. He actually expanded his territory into that northern, north, I reckon you would say that northeast corner of France. That is actually one time, and I don't know, still may be called uh, the, the, the county of Flanders. So, was the writer of that book, well, he's, was he mistaken? Did he hear that name and, 
and and they couldn't really put two and two together. You know, I, I really don't know. But in my research, I believe this Siegfried came from Lower Saxony. There with those counts of Ringelheim, which goes back, I mean, even further in, in that line. Siegfried was called the Dane, otherwise like a Viking descent because of his Danish ancestors on his mother's side. And he might have even had friends who was Vikings called this historical record of this book written about the, uh, the history of Gwens says that Siegfried came and attacked Gwens with his Vikings. Now, there's actually two accounts that Siegfried was called by one of the counts of, of Flanders that was controlling that area to help him because there was somebody else. So, whichever one of these, you know, is true, one of them is, but we know that Siegfried did end up there and he was given as far as... Uh, that portion of that territory called Gwens. So, it was said, like I said earlier, that he was a very powerful military leader of his day. No wonder Henry the Fowler bestowed upon him the government of Brandenburg in 927. During the siege of Gwen, like I said, Arnulf the, the, the Count what they call Arnulf, the great Count of Flanders, who was the son of Baldwin II, he came to terms with uh, Siegfried, whether he came there to help him from that other attack or whether he came there and attacked it himself. This man, Arnulf the Great, came in agreement, in terms, and even a treaty and even the said became friends with Siegfried the Dane. During this time, it said that he became attractive to Arnulf the Great's daughter, whose name was Ethrude. It was said that he even stole her away, kidnapped her, and during that time she became pregnant and had Arduf, uh, what they call Arduf of Gwens, the second count of Gwens. In Gwens, France, even today, there is a man-made mound or hill where there once stood a castle where that Siegfried, the Dane, the first count of Gwens, and his descendants lived in and ruled there as the counts of Gwens. So I believe that Siegfried the Dane is actually in the line, actually what I would say, the male bloodline of the Douglas family that started with William the Douglas and went as far as on back in with the, uh, the, the Fleming family into Normandy and then into as far as this family that was called even the Count of Flanders. I read an old account in an old book that I think a man had written around uh, in, in the 1700s. That, that was talking about this Le Fleming family descended actually and believed from the Baldwins of the Flanders area. One man that even did as far as research and a lot of books about uh, the Le Fleming family said that Archambald Le Fleming and his father Archambald the Viscount of Rouen actually, you know, uh, descended and came uh, from, from the, and his family uh, came from a mighty family there from that area, what they call St. Omer, which is there in the Gwens area. So I hope that this has helped you. And then, like I said, go to our website. Then just type in as far as uh, Dark Streams, uh, the Douglas family story at wixsite.com, and I believe that you will find it. Thank you. Again, please subscribe to our new YouTube channel. Thank you for listening today.